the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Bread for Battle. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. One night, I am standing outside Madison Square Garden when I am approached by Milkier Willie. Now, I know that Milkier is very flat indeed. And since I catch a caterpillar that day at Belmont for a few pounds, I know what he wants. I try to get away. But Milkier has very long arms and big hands, and I find myself inside them. As he says, what is your hurry, Broadway? I am just going inside the garden to witness the impending battle. Forget it. I do not wish to. I wish to see the fight. Yeah? Listen, I need a pound note. Who does not? Loan me a pound. Why? I wish to go to Newark, New Jersey. Now I have an even better reason for asking why. Broadway, I got something real important. And I am going to let you in on it. I thank you, but I will stay outside. Listen, you wish to make yourself a sizable chunk of scratch? If it is a listenable proposition... Then go to Newark with me, and I will cut you in on one of the greatest things that ever hits town. Well, the upshot is that I let Milkier Willie talk me into going to Newark with him. And he has got to go in a cab, which I pay for. Now, this does not sound very exciting to me at the time. But what happens with a kid by the name of Thunderbolt Mulrooney, his mother and his father, is a strange story indeed. And one which I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... Bread for battle. Well, I and Milkier get to Newark, New Jersey and get out of the cab. Milkier is looking for an address, and as we walk along, he says as follows. I got an idea to get me the greatest heavyweight that ever puts on a glove. Oh, yeah? You are going to raise him yourself? You know, it is very funny you say that, because it is almost what I am going to do. Oh. Well, since I give up my scratch to get us here in a cab, maybe you will tell me. Sure. Look, Broadway, what happens with racehorses? As far as I am concerned, nothing usually. I mean, how do they get racehorses? From other horses. That is right. They make sure the horse has got a good bloodline. They make sure he comes from a long line of racehorses, right? Some of the ones I put my toe on seem to come from a long line of dust mops. Ah, that's because there is a flaw in the bloodline someplace. Now, I have... Hey, this is the place I'm looking for. Yeah, how do you know? I got the number on this piece of paper. My, my, how smart can you get? It is nothing. I think of it easy. Come on, let us go in, and I will show you something that will make you a million. I and Milkier go up the stairs of a nice little house with flowers growing in front. Personally, I think Milkier is losing some nails out of his attic because he is once a fighter. And I hear tell that he has great training for other fighters who wish to harden up their hands. However, that is beside the point. Because when we knock on the door, a great big red-headed guy looks out and yells, Boy, y'all, that's good and proper. (laughs) Mickey and Willie. (laughs) Seamus Mulroney, how are you? (laughs) Fine and dandy. And Broadway. (laughs) Well, now, this is a surprise. And a good one. (laughs) Hey, come in, come in, come in. Ah, it is a long time since I see you, Seamus. Ah, that it is, that it is. Maybe, uh... Nineteen years. Yeah, that long, I guess. And you, Broadway, are oh, you're looking well. So are you, Seamus. Oh, I keep fit, I keep fit. <laughs> Here, stop this one, Milky. Oh. Milky. Milky? <laughs> hey, come on. Hey, get up. Get up. <laughs> my, my, nothing changes, does it? Are you all right, Milky? The buzzing will go away in a minute. Hey, I'm... What's all this racket? Seamus, Oh, oh Bridget, heaven, me, the... darling. You remember Milky Air, Willie, well, and Broadway. Th- I do. How are you? Just fine, Bridget. Well, you are just as pretty as ever. Ah, go along with that blarney. I got some tea for the boys, Bridget. <laughs> sure, sure I have. <laughs> Be back in a minute with it. Oh, never a man had a wife like Bridget. I remember the time she puts the blast on Big Sam. She hits almost as hard as you, Seamus. Oh, yes. I could have been heavyweight champagne, but for breaking me hands on O'Shea's head that night at the old garden. Yeah. 
I'm in a prelim that night. What a fight that is between you and O'Shea. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it's gone in by the boards now. Eh, but sit down, boy, sit down. Sure. Thanks. Now, what'll we talk about? Old times? Seamus, I have got a proposition. You got a son. Two boys. Oi, two boys. And one of them is about 19 now? Yes, yes, 19 just a week ago. Yeah. Seamus, you and Bridget are both great ones in a fight. So, your son comes from a fighting family. He is bred for battle. So that is what you are thinking. Why not? If it works for horses, it has got to work for people. Uh, milk here. Yeah? I, I don't know. I don't know. You mean you do not want your son to become heavyweight champ? I give me eye teeth to see him champ. Uh, but... But what, Seamus? Well, are you sure you're talking about Raymond? Raymond? That is his name? Yes, it was Bridget's ID. We will change it. Oh, but, but Milk, uh, are you sure you mean him? He is 19? Yes. It is him. It is who, Milk Ear? Your son, Bridget. What about my son? I figure he is a great fighter because he comes from a long line of fighters. Oh, yes. Me, me father, his father before him, and me great-grandfather was a holy terror. Sure. You're not thinking of making a fighter out of Raymond? Why not? I won't have it. You won't. He's my son, too. All the more you should want to see him live longer. He's a mollycoddle. Because he's not everlasting punching somebody in the head, he's a mollycoddle. Morning around, he play in the pier. What kind of life is that for a Mulroney? Hold your tongue, Seamus Mulroney. I'll not hold me tongue. By all that's good and proper, I've held it long enough where Raymond's concerned. He's a fine, sensitive boy. Mollycoddle. Seamus. Hello. Is anything wrong? This? This is Raymond? Yes. Yeah. This is Raymond. Raymond, darling. I'm sorry I'm late, Mom, but, well, there was a concert. I, I went to hear it. Concert? Oh, there you are, Broadway, Bill Gear. There's me son, Raymond. What's the matter, Dad? Nothing. There's nothing wrong, darling. He's 19, and she calls him darling. When I was 19, I was hauling bricks on me back, and when I was 20, I was fighting the best of them. Look, maybe Raymond is a little on the lean side now, but I can train him and get you a champ, Seamus. Hey, wait a minute. Are you talking about me? Sure, kid. The next heavyweight champ. But I can't fight. Ah, we'll learn you. In a couple of months, no. you'll be the... No, I won't do it. Well, I guess that is that. It is. Now, no more talk of fighting in this house. Hold it a minute. Bridget, you seem to forget I'm the man of the house. You're a fine wife and a wonderful woman. But I am still the man of the house. You're talking quiet now, Seamus. Aye, which means I mean what I say. Raymond. What, Dad? I love you and you're my son. But I want a son to be proud of. I want people to say, there goes Seamus Mulroney's boy. And I want him to say it with a sparkle in her eyes. Not a laugh in their throats to make me ashamed. I'll make you proud of me, Dad. I want to play the piano. First, you'll fight. I can't. Are you a coward, Raymond? Well, are you? I don't know. I don't know whether I am or not. Then find out. Not by fighting. I say you will. If you're a coward, we'll find it out now. Because playing piano or hauling bricks, no coward ever got through life. Milk here. Yes, Seamus? I say, take the boy. Oh, no, Seamus, please, no. Bridget, darling, I said for Milkier to take the boy. So, Milkier takes Raymond and starts to train him, and he changes his name to Thunderbolt. Well, I am forced to admit that in a couple of months, the kid is looking pretty good and is fast on his feet. But I am never convinced that here is a heavy champ because... In the first place, he weighs only maybe 160. And in the second place, there is always a faraway look in his eyes. And personally, I do not care for fighters with faraway looks. Then it comes up one day, and we are in the dressing room at the gym, when Milkier says, Well, kid, you look great today. Just great. Uh-huh. Does he not look good, Broadway? Sure, sure. Very good. Thanks. Now, I will tell you a surprise I got for you. You want to hear it? Sure, if you want to tell it. You fight next week. You hear me? I say you fight next week. Fight? You mean I, I'm going to fight in the ring? I am not training you for a flea circus, kid. You mean fight another man? Huh? What do you think I match you up against? Some doll? Next week? 
Oh, no, I'm not ready, Milker. I, I can't do it. <laughs> nah, you're nervous, that's all. Everybody gets that way, right, Broadway? Oh, sure. I see lots of champs so nervous they are hardly able to walk into the ring. Come to think of it, I see some come out the same way. Don't say that. Take it easy, kid. After the first one's under your belt, you'll sail along. Right, Broadway? Huh? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, Milky. What? I will take care of Thunderbolt here. You run along. What for? Do you not say you've got things to do? Sure. Well, you do them. I will see that Thunderbolt comes along later. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So long, kid. Take it easy. You going to get dressed, kid? Yeah, sure. Uh, Broadway. What? Huh? Next week. He said next week, didn't he? He says next week, yeah. Why? I don't want to. Oh, maybe you will feel different later. No, I won't. It wasn't so close while I was training. It it seemed far away. Maybe like I'd never get around to it. But now... Tell me something, Thunderbolt. What? Why do you not wish to fight? Because it's senseless and stupid. A lot of good guys are in the ring. Because they like it. Maybe you will. I don't like to think of hitting anybody. I I don't like to think of getting hit myself. I see. You think I'm a coward, don't you? I will never think any kid of Seamus Mulrooney is a coward. Just because he was a great fighter, I've got to live up to it. Don't people ever think anyone wants to live his own life the way he wants it? And you want to play the piano? Yes, and that's all. It is a very funny thing. What is I never remember Seamus ever being musical. Or Bridget. What difference does that make? None, I guess. Maybe no difference at all. But it, it just seems funny. That is all. And the more I think about it, the funnier it seems. And the more Milkier keeps talking about the kid being bred for battle, the more I think. Because it is true that he comes from a line of fighters, and yet, well, just about this time, it seems to me I remember something that happens a long time ago, and I do some checking up. And what I find out is strange indeed. And what happens because I find out is something I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Bread for Battle. Like I say, I find out something. But I never believe that anybody should talk about what he finds out, especially if he wants to keep on good terms with other citizens. However, I now like the kid and wish to save him a lot of trouble. So I ask Bridget Mulrooney to come see me because I wish to talk to her. Why didn't you come to see me, Broadway? Well, I figure maybe we would not be alone at your place. Oh? I, uh, I wish to talk to you about Raymond. What about him? You know, he fights in a couple of days. I know. You do not wish him to. I've prayed that something had happened to stop the fight. Nothing will stop him. He mustn't get hurt, Broadway. He mustn't. You love him more than somewhat, Bridget. Yes. Maybe even more than your other kid, Terry. Why do you say that? Look, Bridget, when Raymond climbs through the ropes in a couple of nights from now, he will be scared. He will not have his mind on the fight. Now, the ring is no place for a fighter who has got his mind someplace else. He has got to think only of the fight. Why are you telling me this, Broadway? Because I like the kid. I do not wish to see him get hurt. Maybe hurt real bad. That's not all you want to tell me, is it? I guess you know I know, huh, Bridget? I guess I do. But all I know is that a long time ago, a very pretty doll indeed falls in love with a guy. But her mother and father do not approve of this citizen, so she runs away with him. They get married upstate. Then the guy is killed in an accident. Maybe not more than a month after they get married. You've you got to tell me all that. You've got to make it all come back again. Like I say, the guy is killed and the doll comes back. Nobody but her mother and father know what happens, and they say nothing. Then along comes another guy, a guy who is in love with the doll. He marries her. But you don't know. Oh, holy mother, you can't know that Raymond isn't Seamus' son. I do know, Bridget. Because it seems I remember that the young guy who is killed 
plays the piano. Very good. Oh. And what will you do, Broadway? What will you say? I will say or do nothing, Bridget. Then why did you tell me? Because there is only one way to keep Raymond out of that oh, ring. Seamus thinks the kid is a coward. He is ashamed of him because he thinks no son of his has got a right to be scared. But if he I knows... I can't tell Seamus. Not after 19 years. Why, he's a fine man, Broadway. I've come to love him so much I'd rather look on my own coffin than see him hurt. And it'd hurt him like all the devils in purgatory. And he'd never lift a hand to me or, or give me more than a look. He's that good he is. Then you are going to let Raymond go into the ring... Oh, what else can I do? Oh, mother, oh, mother, what else can I do? So that is how we leave it. Then it comes up the afternoon of the fight. We are all at Seamus Mulroney's place in Newark. Seamus is very happy indeed because he listens to Milk here say, I tell you, Seamus, we have got a natural. He's as fast as a feather. Of course, I could ask for a little more beef, but a good light heavy is nothing to laugh at, is it, Broadway? Huh? Uh, no, 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 I guess not. <laughs> What's the matter, Broadway? You think you was the one to go into the ring tonight? <laughs> How do you feel, Thunderbolt? All right. Uh, look, uh, look, my boy. Uh, stand up. What? Oh, what did you say, Dad? Uh, stand up. No. Now take your fighting stance, boy. Oh, look, Dad, I'd rather get some rest. Let the boy alone, Seamus. Oh, Bridget, me darling. I was just going to give him a bit of advice for tonight. Yes, he's nervous and tired. Let him get some rest. Oh, the nervousness will run out of his fingers the first time he steps in the ring. I said let him alone. Now, please, please, let him alone. Now, what is eating, Pritchett? Oh, uh, uh, she's as nervous as the boy. <laughs> uh, she'll be all right. I'm going in and lie down a while. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, but before you go... Yes, Dad? I am proud of you. Oh, there were times when I had me misgivings. But you're a true son of mine, a true son... Is that right, Broadway? Oh, sure, sure. He is a true son, Seamus. And tonight I'll be there, watching me own son making the name of Mulroney shine again. Well, when I hear Seamus say that, I almost tell him what I know. But I change my mind, hoping that something will happen. It comes up that night, the kid is carded third on the bill, which is a good spot for any new boy. It seems that everybody remembers Seamus and will do anything for his son. Of course, this does not extend to the kid's opponent, who is as rough as they come. And it does Raymond no good at all when he hears the first bout ends in a knockout, and he gets a good look at the boy who is carried down the corridor. Then it is in the dressing room. Now remember, Thunderbolt, this guy has got a good left and likes to cross his right after a jab, so watch for it. And when he crosses, bring up your right, got it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Take it easy, kid. It is only a fight. Sure, only a fight. Uh, what's going on out there now? Oh, just another fight, son. Uh, now, look, boy. Keep your mind on the fight. You have got to think of the fight, kid. You have got to. Sure, sure. But my hands... Tape too tight? No, no. But is there enough on them? Will they get hurt? Oh, boy. Every fighter hurts his hands. Yeah, but don't think of that. I want more tape on them. Milker, I, I want more tape. I can't. You got enough. Okay, Mulroney, get ready. Hey, you. Yeah? What happens in the second bout? Hey, oh. Gardner got took apart. Don't think he'll get him back together again, either. Come on, Mulroney. No. No, I'm not going out there. I'm I'm not going out there to get hurt to satisfy those... those... I'm not going out, do you hear me? I'm not going to fight. Easy, kid. The minute you crawl through the ropes, you'll be okay. I'm not going through the ropes. Let me get out of here. Get out of my way. Don't you move. Oh, oh, Dad, I've tried. I've tried for you, but I can't. I can't do this anymore that I can hit you. You're not a coward. You're not. Yes. Yes, I'm a coward. If that means not wanting to fight, I'm a coward. So help me. He is yellow. Shut up, Milk here. Raymond, you're going to walk out of this room and into that ring. You hear me, boy? No. For the last time, you'll go. No. I tell you, I can't. No more than I can hit you. Then, sir, help me. You'll have to do just that. I want no coward in my family. If 
you'd go in that ring and lose, I'd love you just the same. But if you don't go, then so help me, you're no son of mine. I won't go in. Put up your fists. Put them up. Seamus, you are crazy. Keep out of this. This is between me and him. Put up your fist, boy. Seamus, get away from him. Register, go away. Get out. Put down your fist, Seamus Mulrooney. Put them down. You have no right in here. You have no right to come between me and my... Your son, Seamus. I, my son. Will you let him do as he wants, Seamus? Will you let him walk out of here as he wants to do? No. He's my son and I'll not see him. He is not your son, Seamus Mulroney. What are you saying, Bridget Mulroney? I have said it. Now I'll tell you more. Something that should have been said 19 years ago to save the hurt I've got to do now. Look at him, Seamus. I look close at him and look at him while I talk to you. And Bridget tells all she has to tell. We listen to her. Raymond's face is getting all white and he keeps looking down at his hands. Seamus Mulroney's jaws stick out a foot and his mouth works and the muscles at the sides of his face go in and out. Then Bridget finishes. And Seamus just looks at her and says... And you waited until now to tell me. Until now. And may the saints forgive me, Seamus. Aye. May they indeed. The boy mustn't fight. Aye, he mustn't fight. He mustn't fight. Where are you going, Seamus? Going? Home, Bridget. I am going home. Oh, Seamus. Seamus. Uh, I guess we'd better cancel about. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Hey, you, you go along and do it, Milky. I will wait upstairs. Mom. Oh, Mom. What, lad? Why didn't you tell me? Because I'm the one that's the coward. If you told me, I, I would have fought to keep from hurting him. Sure you would. But you are not a fighter, Raymond. Hey, Mulroney, shake it up. Shake it up. This ain't no charity, Bob. Hey, you, wait a minute. Yeah? Look, uh, you, you tell I'll him. I'll be up in a minute. Okay. Raymond, look. look, kid, your mother just goes through something real bad to get you out of this. I know. And Dad did, too. What are you thinking? He doesn't want a coward in the family. I'm going to see that there isn't one. It's all I can do. Oh, son, no, don't. Broadway, come with me, will you? Once and for all, you are no fighter. You never are and you never will be. Oh, no. Anything can happen in that ring, especially now. Are you coming along with me or do I go it alone? I guess you do not go it alone. Wait here, Mom. Please wait here. Come on, Broadway. <laughs> never forget that fight as long as I live. Neither will anybody else. I will tell you only that Raymond loses. But it is how he loses that makes me remember. He is hit with everything in the book, but he gets up time after time, and the crowd that is booing at first stands on its feet to cheer. The referee tries to stop the bout a couple of times, but Raymond shoves him away with a look in his eyes that makes the referee think better of stopping him. Even the guy he is fighting cannot understand, and now and then backs away just to look at the kid who never gives up. Then the fight is over, and it is in the dressing room later. Oh, why? Why did you do it, son? Why? I'm all right, Mom. My hands are all right. Things to be brave. And Broadway, I'm not a coward, am I? Oh, no. I didn't disgrace his name, did I? Tell me! There is nobody in the world who will say that after tonight. And what we know is just between ourselves. Just between ourselves. That's good. And I'm not a coward. I was never more proud of me name than tonight. Shame. We think you go home. I... I heard the announcement. I, I heard me name. I stayed. You... You saw it then? I... I saw it. Oh, let me look at you, boy. Shame. Oh, it's all right, Bridget, me darling. Now, Raymond? Yes, Dad? I... 
I guess it's time we were getting you home, son. And they go home. Bridget, Shavis, and their son, Raymond. And I am very happy. But that is not the end of the story. The payoff comes maybe a year later. And I will tell you about it in a minute. say it is maybe a year later that I am sitting in Mindy's when in comes Milk Ear Willie. He sits down by me, takes half of my blintzes, and says as follows. You hear about me, Broadway? Yeah, yeah, I do. Seems to me I hear that you are now managing a very good lightweight. Uh-huh. Good blintzes. Wonderful. Why do you not buy some? Not nah, hungry. Well, anyway, like I say, I manage a very good fighter now. You do not say it. I do. However, I am glad you come in, Milk, here, because there is a slight matter of finance between us I would like to clear up. Hmm. Or so? How's that? One year ago, you touched me for a pound to get to Newark, New Jersey, to see about a heavyweight prospect who turns out to be Raymond Mulrooney. So? What is the financial difficulty? Since I advanced the fin, you give me a piece of Raymond Mulrooney as a fighter. I never see the fin again. I wish it back. Broadway, you buy a piece of Raymond. That fizzles out, and so does your investment. We do not speak about lightweights at the time. Broadway, you have got to be very careful where you invest your money. Now I got to go see my boy, Terran Terry. Who? Broadway, like I always say, blood will tell. He is bred for battle. Who is bred for battle? Bridget and Seamus' son, Terran Terry Mulrooney. <laughs> And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Bread for Battle. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. Mm-hmm.